Well, hello. Well, hello. It's Jordan here, Adam, and today we're reviewing Dream Theaters, Black Clouds and Silver Linings. It came out in 2000, 2009, in June, and fun fact: the day before we left to go to New York that yes. year, that was fun. We got to listen to it on the way there. That was pretty fun. And now it's almost a year later, and we're reviewing it now. And we finally got our video. Back. <laughs> now the artwork's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it. Kind of. I like it. I like the back cover better because the lighthouse. Of course, lighthouses like, are awesome. I like ocean. More. I like water and stuff. And this was a special edition that featured three discs: one with the album, one with a second disc of covers they did. And another one with instrumental versions of the songs. And cool thing, we actually met John Petrucci, the guitar player, and he autographed it for us. Mm hmm. Which is cool. It was awesome. Oh, by the way, he does not wear briefs or boxers. He likes the banana hammocks. Mm hmm. We asked him. And the, the album opens up with. A very like heavy kind of like um, almost you know, almost like a could be a symphonic start of a metal yeah, song. Like uh, the song is called Choir uh, It's called A Nightmare to Remember. Now it's about John Petrucci's car accident that he got into. I'm not sure when, but the I like the song. It has a very cool opening. Mm -hmm. Piano. Mind. And, uh, very dark. Now, they had a, a darker, heavier approach to this album, which is good. Mm hmm. And it's really long. Actually, it's like 16, 16 minutes and 10 seconds. This which song. is typical for like a Dream Theater song. The progressive metal, if you didn't know. So, the lyrics are corny. Very. Very I corny. I don't like the lyrics at all. There's only one line in the song that I actually enjoy listening to when it's sung by James Labrie, the vocalist. Could you imagine what that is? Yes. Life was so simple then. Nope. Really? Nope. I don't know. My personal favorite line in the whole entire song, I'm a vocalist myself, so I normally, you know, go for certain lines that I enjoy, is hopelessly drifting, bathing like in beautiful agony. I like that. I love that line. It just makes me so happy. Everything else. It's very corny, very, you know, weird. Well, the song is amazing. Definitely check oh, that one out. Music is amazing. Music, by all, by, all, by all accounts, everything's great. Even the blast beats at the end, which you'd never imagine. Yeah, you just Portnoy, would but not expect. I turned on, I listened to it, I was like, blast beats? They just do it, they have every, something new on every album, it's just great. The second song, A Rite of Passage, which is the first single they released. Mm -hmm. It's got a kind of cool theme to it, I guess. It's got, a, it's got an interesting theme to it. it. It's not my favorite song in the album, by any count whatsoever. But, it was, it was a pretty decent song. I mean, when you hear it, like, when, when, the, when, it, when they first released the single, it was really cool to hear a new Dream Theater yeah. song. We were only like two years. Yeah, and it, it was it was really it was a really cool song. You know, it was okay. It's Vocal, about, yeah. It's yeah. about like uh, like Freemasonry and like all that like stuff like that. And the lyrics are okay. The lyrics are okay. They're always okay. Normally with Dream Theater, you find better lyrics, but for some reason on this, this album. This album I don't like a lot of the lyrics. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that very good, but... Um, they got some pretty cool, you know, it, it, it opens up with a... Um, what would you call it? Uh, it's a guitar. Well, it is a guitar, but what kind of... <laughs> what kind of, like, sound would you say that is? It's like a... It's like a... It's almost Egyptian type, yeah. maybe, I guess Once you Once a song picks up, it's cool. Oh, it's I really, really cool. love the chorus, though. I do, I, I do love the chorus. It is an amazing chorus. Of course, John Petrucci, on all of his solos, very amazing. Very amazing writer of solos. I don't know how he does it. He's just ridiculous. The other, yeah, uh, freaking a nightmare to remember. That was a good solo too. 
They have, they have some really good solos. There's, there's also a lot of weird keyboard stuff. In yeah, this. definitely. Some really weird keyboard stuff. And, uh, the chorus to uh, uh, A Rite of Passage is definitely one of my favorites on the album. A good one. Number three, Wither. My personal favorite song on the album. Me too. I just such a beautiful song. It's amazing. I, I originally, when I first heard it, just by just the imagery that was used in the lyrics. By the way, this is my favorite song lyrically on the album completely. Um, written by John Petrucci, I believe, right? Yep. He's an amazing lyricist. I don't know what it is about his lyrics I just love. He's definitely better than Porn Boy. Oh yeah, definitely. My Porn Boy sucks. He's a good drummer. But he just sucks there. I like anyway. James's lyrics too, but he didn't write any on the album. Yeah, he's lazy. Um, so uh, the, the piano is perfect. Oh yeah, definitely. The guitar is perfect. Everything is just perfect. Always, definitely, especially on this song. Definitely check that one out. Yeah. Good. Uh, the Shattered Fortress, which I've listened to like once, maybe. It continues on the saga from Mr. Portnoy's Twelve Alcohols, step. Twelve Steps of Recovery for Alcohols Anonymous. Being an alcoholic. And this song is basically just different parts of all the other ones cut up. Yeah. The intro is cool because it's a bit different. I like how the keyboard builds and picks up. But yeah, everything yeah. else is just, you've heard it on other albums. Kind of boring. A little bit. The Best of Times, my personal least favorite on the album. Another Mike Portnoy. I mean, it, it has a good message. It has a good understanding. Like, I mean, it's about his father who uh, died a few weeks before the album was written. So, so obviously I respect the fact that he wanted to pay tribute to his father. But it, um, it opens up very slow with a piano line that I think Jordan would just could have made a lot better. It's always going to be it made better. Builds up. It sounds exactly like Spirit of the Radio from Rush. Oh, I love that song, though. It's a good song. But I like how the beginning's kind of like slow and depressing, which would be like the death mood. And then once it gets faster, mm. it like. He's talking about like his good memories. Exactly. Which is upbeat. So to the last track on the song. Album. Wait, album. My bad. Called The Count of Tuscan. Okay, so um, we saw him perform a little bit of it when we met him. I personally think this is my second favorite on the album. There's a part in the middle where the keyboard does like cool stuff, and then when the acoustic guitar is coming, it's just amazing. Oh, I'm really like the cool guitar. Lyrics, really suck though. Obviously, they always suck. For some reason, most of Dream Theaters, like I said, most of their lyrics are good. But, for some reason, I guess they got lazy on this. They figured that people weren't listening to the lyrics, but we're listening! No. And it's about you know, John Petrucci's trip to Italy. When he got drunk. Tuscany. And uh, he met the Count of Tuscany, who apparently, I guess, was really weird. And uh, they t he took him for a ride, I guess, kind of stupid, but for some reason. They decided to write a song about it. Yeah, they decided to write a song about how scared they were during this encounter with this dude. Nothing happened. No. Nothing ever happens. You go to New York, you think you're going to run into famous people? It never happens. We did, though. Yeah, we did. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, and then... The covers... Oh, yes. They covered a, a rainbow song, Stargazer. Deal. Which is amazing. And then I don't really care for the other five. Is there and a Queen one on there? Yeah. Queen it's like it's part of like a uh, medley. Yeah. Oh. So they do the entire thing. Oh, okay. And then they covered an Iron Maiden one to Tame Land. Which I think I think they did a good job on that, but I like my version better. It's a good version. Anyway. Overall. It's a pretty good, pretty good release. Second release off Roadrunner Records, right? Yeah. That's like what they're like twentieth release though. In reality, what is it? Twelfth, I believe. Twelfth release. 
Second on Roadrunner Records. So, you know they've been around for a long ass time. They don't disappoint. I don't think Love they've ever... Album. Yeah, well, good album. Good music. Good music. Shite lyrics. Yeah, but it's okay. Still listen to it. If you like progressive metal, or, well, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, pick it up if you haven't already, or if you have, and you have any feedback on it. You I know, definitely anything. recommend it. Yeah, definitely. But if you have any feedback that you want to, like, talk about, if you want to say anything that we missed or anything like that, post. Uh, by all means, post on the bottom. Um, overall, good. Ooh, good album. I, I'd probably give it, what, the... Maybe like a... 73 out of an 84, maybe? I was thinking more like a 77 out of a 90. Oh, okay. That, that's a good one. 91. Yeah. Yeah, 91's yeah. better. This is Adam Brown. It's J-Ma. Signing off. Thanks for watching.